thank you so much for joining us. Uh, well, thank you. And now, how long are you over here for? How long are you staying in the UK? Actually, I'm leaving tomorrow, unfortunately, oh, because I'm having such a great time here. Yeah, because you like London, don't you? you like, uh, I love London. Mm -hmm. I never have the time, though. I, I, there's so many places to see and visit, and unfortunately, I'm on the go. Have you been around the rest of the UK much? Have you seen the rest no. of the country? You no, see, not You should really. get out there. No, I know. You should take me. Well, you should come. <laughs> I'm going to Alton Towers in the summer. I'll take you up there. All right. Great. They've got a new ride there called Rita, Queen of Speed. Really? Yeah. What oh. a stupid name for a ride, that is. Because my children have a geography teacher called Rita. <laughs> <laughs> So they're confused already because she's not actually that fast. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I feel I've relaxed you now. Um, uh, it's lovely to have you here. Um, there's, a, there's a new book out, ladies and gentlemen, and there was a, a DVD that goes with it, as well as there was a TV show just this week uh, that sort of had some of the footage in it. Uh, it's called Elvis by the Presleys. Um, and this is the first time you've shown a lot of the footage that you had, obviously, uh, with kind of personal footage, family footage. Very, very personal, yes. And, and shared your recollections and those uh, all who also knew Elvis that well. Why did you choose to do it now? Why, why this particular moment? You know, um, there's a whole new generation of kids that are really interested in Elvis. Ever since the song Little Less Conversation came out, which you did a very good job, by yep. the way. Yep. Um, uh, there's been a lot of interest in Elvis. And, you know, we all know him and have you know, grown up with him. So this is our way of kind of introducing him to this new generation and, of course, to all the older generations, too. Um, it's fabulous stuff. I'm a huge Elvis fan. Oh, um, good. Always have been. You and, dress uh, like him. Thank you. I think, <laughs> I think I'm kind of like a slightly more handsome version mm. of... <laughs> he was an impossibly attractive man, wasn't he? Unbelievable, yes. In fact, I hadn't seen some of the footage in a long time, and when you see it again, you're like, my gosh, it, it, it was it incredibly is. beautiful. Let's have a look at some of the footage. This is from um, Elvis by the Presleys. The book's out now, and the DVD, I think, is out next week. Have a look at this. Uh, that's from Elvis with the Presleys. If you're an Elvis fan, you have to get a copy of that. It really is fabulous. It's so great to see that, that footage. It yeah, really is yeah. exceptional. It really gives you a flavour of of him at home and his life, which I suppose right. many of us imagine what it'd be like, but we didn't really know. It, it must be strange for you looking back at though and seeing yourself with him at that period in your you know, life. You know what it does is, is when you see that, which I've realised, when you see all that footage, and I think it puts to rest a lot of things that have been said about him. You know, you get to see the man at play, like, like I said earlier, and there's been so many things about him that's been written, and, and, and a lot of them quite hurtful, you know, that he was never home, he never did this, or he was, you know, a little bit odd. He wasn't odd. He was just a man who really and truly enjoyed life. He had a wonderful spirit of play, and I think the audiences or the viewers get to see that. We'll talk a bit more about him uh, in a minute, but, uh, but I'm keen about, to know about when you first met him, because you were, were you 14 when you first 14, met him? 14, yes. 14 years old. Now, what fascinates me here is at that time, when Elvis first broke on the scene, this was pretty early on in his career, he was, parents were being warned about this guy. Mm. He was like, the, you know, the, the worst man mm. on the planet. You wouldn't want your children to even see him on television. Right. Um, and yet your parents, you know, you went out on a date with them that age. Were they worried? Were they protective of you when they knew it was Elvis? Or did they understand immediately he wasn't as bad as he was being painted? Well, at first, you know, it was just an introduction. And it was just, you know, I, w I went to visit him that one time. But never, never did we think that he was going to call and invite me back. That's what my parents couldn't understand, is why are, is he calling you, you know, why are you going to visit? And, you know, the relationship started to develop and his father got involved and started to talk to my parents and then there was a lot of concern. That was, well, they didn't understand that at all. So after Elvis came over to the house, per my father saying, you know, you're not going out anymore with him until he comes here and I meet him. That was about the third or fourth time I went. Then they saw his charm. And, and he was just a very a, a gentleman and totally different than what the media had portrayed him as. And at that time, you could watch television, you know, I mean, they, he was told not to, to move from the waist not down. Not to use those hips of his, the pelvis. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, he put all that to rest immediately. And he was, yes, sir, no, sir, you know, uh, sir, it's just, you know, refreshing to have someone speak English to me because of their journey. No, in Germany, no one was speaking English. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, that's is good. Um, <laughs> now, now you, you lived with Elvis for, uh, I think, five years mm -hmm. before you got married to him? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now why did you live for that period of time with him and then decide to get married? What, what, what inspired you then to, why did you change the arrangement? Oh, well, you know, I was young. I mean, I was young and he was, his career was just getting back together. You know, he came back from the service in 60, I believe, and then you know, had to get back in, into the groove and, I mean, even though he was still very popular, it was best that he didn't get married right away and I think that was... Oh, that I was see. So they kind of, so even though you had a relationship going on, they kind of kept it that he was... Oh, it was very private. Oh. I was the girl that, you know, was kept back. I, that must have been horrible for you. It was terrible. It was, it was you know, it was, um, I got used to it, but then I started, eventually, starting to visit uh, 
uh, in L.A. and I would spend, you know, four, five, six, seven weeks and then I'd keep going back with him and I started traveling with him. But still very reserved and very much, you know, not out in the public. So it was all kept quiet. The all kept quiet. Um, there were so many things I could ask you about. Let me, let me, let me fast forward to the year 1968 because mm -hmm. this was, I would have thought, a great year for both you and for mm -hmm. Elvis um, for any number of reasons. Not least because that was the year, of course, you had your daughter. Right. And also that was the year he kind of came back with that TV special. Exactly. Which is now known as the comeback special, but mm -hmm. it wasn't seen as that at the time necessarily, or was it? It was a singer special. It was supposed to be for Christmas. And uh, it was a first uh, where he was singing in the round. He had Steve Bender who produced the show. And Elvis was extremely nervous uh, because this was the first time since his contracts for the movies had run out. So this so, was the first time appearing. So he'd been tied up in Hollywood doing right. those films, which weren't great films. I mean, I like them in a certain way, but right. they're, they're not, you know, not him at his best, really, right, are they? Right. No, not at all. In fact, he couldn't wait to get out of the contracts. He was tied to those. And once he was freed of that, he wanted to go back and perform again. And he... Um, Literally, uh, I'd never seen him so nervous before. And then when Steve suggested doing the, the special in, in the round with people who were closest to him to make him feel comfortable. In fact, the guys that were all sitting around with him at that time were all you know, people that lived with us and traveled with us, all his guys. That's just an incredible show. It I, I really know, it is, is, yes. Remarkable. Um, now, let's talk about the guys. You mentioned the guys who travel and interview. There was kind of an entourage. He was the first star I was aware of growing up who I knew had a gang of people right. who were his people. That must have been quite strange, I would have thought, for you, having these guys in your life, kind of an extended family. Well, at first, you know, it was okay. I mean, a lot of the guys were there in Germany. Um, but then I had no idea that they came attached. You know, when I visited uh, Elvis, they were always there. And then I start to realize that, you know, that, that was you know, part of the deal. Um, they were friends that he <coughs> felt most comfortable with, people that he wanted around him uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, one was comic relief, you know, one, one guy was so extremely funny that, you know, it kept him, you know, kept him... So he, had a, he was like a king, basically. He had a court jester. <laughs> right, yeah, true. He yeah. had some tough guys, I guess. Yeah. There's uh, people he felt comfortable with, and it was, it was the entourage. And Memphis, the Memphis Mafia got its title from the press, actually, who labeled that. Yeah, well, you wouldn't call them the Mafia yourself unless you wanted to attract the wrong kind of attention. True, yes. Um, one thing I always loved, uh, and it's a kind of the myth that's grown up around Elvis, uh, is, is his generosity, mm -hmm. of course. And I'm saying myth insofar as it's now you know, reached that level, but it was true, of course. He Absolutely was a very true. generous man. Extremely generous. In fact, Elvis used to you know, feel that, you know, why shouldn't people have what he had? Obviously he, you know, they didn't, so he would, it was, and I'm, it's been known that he would give cars away, jewelry away, if someone liked a ring, I mean, he would take it off his finger and give it to him. But did people try and take advantage of that? Because, you know, if, even when I was a kid growing up in East London, I knew that this man called Elvis had given cars to people. Right. And I'll be honest with you, Priscilla, I used to hope I'd bump into him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's a stupid dream to have, because mm. I was in Leytonstone, and more importantly, I was 12, so I wouldn't have been able to drive it anyway. Right. <laughs> but I used to think, if I met him, I'd say, oh, I'd have a car. <laughs> and I'm sure, didn't you get people come and say, no, oh, need a ring, Elvis? Absolutely. I, well, people around were pretty protective. I mean, we all had our antennas up on people who came into the group that were like that, and yes, they were quite a few that were like that, especially around Christmas, because he was so generous around Christmas that, you know, that's when everyone came, you know, they'd fly out to Memphis at that time, and, <laughs> you know, and they'd bring their wives, and hoping that, that there'd be lots of handouts, but we protected him and, you know, told him who was coming and, and you know, watched out for him. Now, I think Elvis was the best dressed man of the last century. That probably says more about me than anything else. But I, I do I love his style. And I loved what I understood to be his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. may not be the case, but uh, there seemed to be certain perks that went with being the king of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he had you know, the house he wanted and the friends he wanted. He had a beautiful wife who he loved. Um, but he also managed to wrangle his way into the police force mm -hmm. without going through the normal procedure, I believe. Well, he, he loved collecting badges and from every state, actually, and that was his thing. And it started as a whim, you know. He wanted to be in Memphis with a, a police badge because he wanted to be able to pull people over and arrest them. <laughs> so, and did he ever, he used, yeah. to, he used to arrest people? Well, he'd be upset, you know, if someone did something wrong or go through a light, I don't, depending on what mood he was in, he'd put the little, you know, the little so light on. So he put the siren on the, on the he, Elvis mobile. And he would go after them and stop them on the side of the road, pull out his badge and say, you know, you're under arrest. And they'd go for what? And first of all, they would go crazy because it was Elvis. Well, you'd be surprised to be, yeah. you know, to put it mildly. <laughs> you know, the king of rock and roll just pulled you over for speeding. Oh, my God. And they were 
completely taken aback by him, but he started laughing because, uh, you know, he thought it was a big joke after that. Because um, I, I remember seeing some photographs of him actually pulling people over and walking up to the sites of accidents with a torch and, oh, and offering to help people, right, right. but wearing the most flamboyant collars. He was like the most absurdly dressed cop in the world. <laughs> he was like a superhero cop. Because he could do it. Did he ever dress up for you? Did he ever wear uh, fancy pants, special outfits, high collars in the bedroom? Sure, all the time. Absolutely. That's what he'd do. He'd go and change and uh, wear outfits like yours. Well, this is... Uh, <laughs> somebody in your honour. Um, we had your lovely daughter on the show yes. about a year ago. Now, we're all kind of protective of our kids, and I'm sure you are with her. What was it like for you when she came home and said, Mum, I'm going to marry Michael Jackson? Mm. That must have been something no parent wants to hear. <laughs> I mean, did well, she soften the blow at all? First of all, I, I didn't know she got married that day. It was a total surprise to me. They were Probably, dating. That's the biggest surprise anyone could spring yeah. on anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You knew they were dating? Of course they were dating, but when she ran off and got married, um, uh, someone heard it on the news and there was helicopters flying all over my house and I'm going, well, what's going on, you know? And then I, I hear that did, someone came in and said, you know, did, did Lisa marry Michael? And I go, no, 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 she would never do that without telling me. And sure enough, I get a telephone call with her, from her and she goes, Mom, what? she goes, guess what? And I go, what? She goes, are you sitting? And um, I said, what is it, Lisa? Because when that comes from her, I never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So she said that she was married, and it was, um, it was, it was a shock. I think it was a shock. probably yes. Yeah. Um, and what did you, you know, how did you work that out? I mean, it's... You know, obviously they got married, and I certainly wasn't going to be, you know, the mother-in-law that was going to be the, the demon. It had to run its course, and, you know, she's a smart girl, and she eventually, you know, saw that. Yeah. You know... I obviously, you know, adored Elvis, like so many millions of people around the world did. Um, and still love and respect his talent. When you saw the final few, I mean, you weren't with him anymore. I believe you split up in 72, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. 72, 72. Uh, you obviously stayed close, you were mm -hmm. in touch, I'm sure. Um, but when you see the final footage of him, you see those last few concerts, even for us fans, that was kind of hard to mm -hmm. watch sometimes. For you, someone mm -hmm. who'd been as close to that, that must have been, I would have thought, very difficult. Absolutely. It was devastating, you know, but that was... Um it was a very hard time for him, you know, with his career, where he wanted to go, what he wanted to do. I, you know, he felt quite lonely and, you know, he really didn't have a clue at that time. He didn't think there was anything wrong, you know, and you can't go and you say, you know, you need to... They didn't have rehab back then. They no. didn't have intervention. They didn't have Betty Ford's. But he wouldn't have gone anyway because he didn't think there was anything wrong with him. He probably thought he could just carry on anyway, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. You know, we've seen him... Uh, check himself in the hospitals before when he would be on tour and felt like you know he just wanted to rest he'd go in for a couple of days and enjoy just staying away from everybody and so we always felt that you know that he'd be fine but um, it, 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 get, it got pretty bad toward the end he was one of the if not the greatest talent I think of the last century uh, and I'm so delighted that he is still respected and admired by fans and you know what on behalf of those fans and I am one myself said thank you so much for sharing those moments mm -hmm. because it, you know it really does mean a lot to us and oh, good. here's someone we're never going to get to know we're never going to get to meet or see but you kind of get a feeling from that and of course you're keeping the memory alive and we thank you for that thank you um continue success with great stands and, and all the things you do thank you so much for coming on the show well, thank you for inviting me priscilla presley thank ladies you. and gentlemen thank you so much that was lovely nice. thank you mm -hmm. that was a joy thank, thank you so thank much, you so much. That was, wasn't that fascinating? Fascinating, what a lovely one.